Hello YouTube, this is Victor and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I'm in a lovely paradise in the French Caribbean. Uh, if you've been following me for a while, you know I've come here. I'm coming here once a year because my sister is living here. Uh, and uh, well, this week I'm going to talk about how flight attendant can feel very lonely. If you're new to my channel, uh, I my name is Victor. I'm a flight attendant. Every week I share with you some trips, some not not trips, some tips and tricks on how to travel in better conditions. And sometimes also I share with you how to uh, be a flight attendant or what's a little bit of flight attendant life. So welcome aboard. So last week I promised you I'm going to show you how I pack my suitcase when I travel for months. I actually did the video, edited it, not really, didn't really like it, so I've decided to can it. I will do it another time. Uh, I've been in Spain for a week for my other job and then I'm actually just for a few days here to enjoy the sun and the family. Um, so I thought like because I've been flying as a passenger and I feel very alone, I'm usually used to speak with flight attendants and the rest of the crew and then I was a passenger alone in my seat and I thought well how about I talk about loneliness of flight attendants because we are very lonely um, yes we fly with 300 passengers on board we are a team of 10 flight attendants and then we also have between two to four flight crew uh, on the flight deck but once you land once we get into our hotel uh, if we have a 24 48 sometimes 72 hours uh, first thing we're going to usually sleep because we've been working all night and then we um, we need to rest uh, sorry it's so much Sun I my eyes are blinking all the time uh, and then you wake up at different time from your colleagues sometimes you will plan to go for lunch or dinner or just go a little bit of shopping but if it's a destination you've been many times and for me it's like Tokyo Narita which is very close from the airport it's not so much in Narita it's a small village by the airport uh, Singapore which is amazing but I stay there only for 24 hours and I want to sleep during the day there's some places where I fly quite often and honestly I've done it all so there's not much more I want to see and sometimes I want to uh, focus more on my rest uh, so um, you have to be fine to be dealing with your own company for a long time when you're a cabin crew uh, and the question that comes quite often is how do we deal with uh, jet lag jet lag is a small issue it's not that big uh, it's a small issue because we don't have time to get jet lagged uh, we actually just a destination for a very short amount of time and then we'll have to fly back home so I don't want to get myself used to the time zone overseas because I will need to go back to my home very quickly um, but that means we're gonna sleep at odd hours uh, an example when I fly to Singapore we leave home around midnight, get in Singapore, usually I'm in my hotel at 8 a.m. local time. Uh, I'll sleep, I'll oversleep in Singapore so I don't have to sleep too much when I come back home. I'd rather put that on a company time rather than permit my personal time when on my day, uh, my days off. So I sleep until 11.30 uh, and then go have a quick swim at the pool of the hotel, go for lunch, go for a walk uh, and then I'll sleep probably three hours, have a big nap in the afternoon. Then same thing, go for a walk, I'll do a little bit of work uh, in my uh, hotel room, we'll do some YouTube editing, it's perfect for that. Uh, well, the internet's actually quite crap, but I can edit quite often, I load when I'm back home. And then uh, have dinner and then sleep again until 7am the next day when we go to back to the airport and fly home. So when I get home, uh, after another 10 and a half hour flight, I'm quite tired, I have a very good night's sleep, but the next day I'm super fresh because I overslept in Singapore. The few times I didn't sleep and I went to do a lot of cool stuff in Singapore because it's an amazing city, um, usually I'll be shattered when I go home, I need two days to recover. So I, it's my decision, I'd rather sleep when I'm there on company time and not sleep uh, on my personal days off. Uh, another example, which is quite hard, it's one of the tough destinations for me, is when I go to Buenos Aires. Uh, the flight time is is around 11 and a half hours also it's pretty much the same um, we uh, get to the hotel around 5 p.m. try not to go to bed right now try to stay awake until 11 most of the crew will uh, wake up around 4 5 a.m. go for breakfast at 6 go back to bed and then we'll sleep until 2 p.m. Uh, and that's how we start to get back on the normal time uh, and it's fine because Argentina nothing's happening in the morning people leave late so it kind of works all right but um, in the meantime you're in your bedroom by yourself uh, if you're awake in the middle of the night you need uh, yeah you've got Skype you've got FaceTime you've got a lot of ways to connect with friends but you can't just rely on Netflix so you need to be all right to do some other stuff by yourself uh, for me it's perfect I got another job I'd rather do it when I'm overseas and I've got more time when I'm home uh, for myself for YouTube and for other stuff
And talking about home, when you're home, uh, you work with um, different times than your friends and family. So you come back from a night flight, you're going to sleep during the day, and then in the afternoon it'll be a little bit zombie and you won't be able to stay late too late in the evening. So uh, you need to be organized, you need to understand, and your friends will need to understand that you're not going to be able to connect so much uh, because you'll be working at odd hours. Uh, what I do sometimes with some friends, we just have coffee uh, or lunch uh, at, during the week while they're at work. So they take the lunch hour and we go outside for a uh, quick lunch or picnic or just a coffee and then they go back to work and that's actually the best time for catching up. I have some very good friends I haven't seen in quite a while just because we, we've got different hours and some of them are cabin crew also so it's even worse because the two of us have really really different schedule. If you have a family or a partner, same thing, it's quite um, a whole organization you need to have. If you have kids, uh, well, um, you're not going to see them every day. Uh, usually quite a lot of crew will fly short haul, uh, original, so they're home more often. But you still need to have a backup plan. Let's say you're somewhere away from home and you're supposed to land at 2 p.m. So ready to go and pick up the, crew, the kids at school later. And then your flight coming home is cancelled or delayed too much. You need someone else to go and pick up the kids. So you need to have a whole backup system with a lot of friends and family we can actually uh, jump in and go and take care of stuff that you were supposed to do. If you have a partner, same thing. Uh, some partners uh, like to see you every day, uh, but uh, if you're cabin crew and out overnight, in some couples it's actually quite, work quite well because uh, since some couples you don't want to see each other every day, it's fine to be two away for two or three nights a week and then you have more quality time when you spend your time together. Uh, it all depends on the chemistry on your couple. So my best advice is to learn uh, what's the best system that works for you for every destination and every flight. So if you're a new flight attendant, it's going to take you a few months, sometimes even a year, uh, to go a few times to the same destination and then see what works best for you. Sleep when you arrive or stay awake when you arrive and then sleep later during the day. And when you come home, same thing. Do Usually if I have a night flight, I always sleep in the morning and then I'm a little bit zombie in the afternoon and I'll go to bed not too late. But uh, it might be different for you. So you'll have to learn and listen to your body. When you're tired, you just need to sleep. I hope you enjoyed this video, it was a quick one. Um, I'll see you next week, so big changes from next week. Uh, there's gonna be a new uh, YouTube channel, uh, Victor, but in English only. It seems that YouTube doesn't really understand who I am and what I'm talking about because this channel is French and English and YouTube doesn't do bilingual. So I'm gonna open another channel and you'll see, I put, put a quick video next week on how you can find me. Um, and then uh, all the videos and quite a few of the old ones will be loaded on that new channel, uh, time by time. And then um, don't unsubscribe yet because because you will be able still to see what the updates are. So I'll see you next week, come back on the same channel. If you like this video, you can put a thumb up. And if you haven't subscribed, well, you don't want to miss next week, so click on the subscribe button right here. Have a good week, bye.